Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight at our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Connie, could you please call the roll? Adamson. Here. Bray. Here. Johnston. Here. Moore. Here. Four. Going. Black. Here. <laughs> cool. Thank you. If you'd please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which, if you would remain standing in the invocation, we will have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires, any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes from the clarification meeting and regular council meeting of November 16, 2017 and December, December 14, 2017 study session. B, payroll and material claims. Council may wish to consider payroll and material claims for the month of December 2017. Good evening, Joyce. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. <clears throat> Joyce Strosheim, Chief Financial Officer for the City. Tonight I'm presenting the Payroll and Material Claims Report for the month of December. Payroll and Material Claims totaled $6,529,108. Payroll-related claims were $4,879,415. This reflects a three payroll month in the month of December. We had 677 employees at the end of December, and we had changes in filled positions of an increase of four in the full-time status and a decrease of seven in the part-time status for an overall decrease of three. Vendor claims, $1,649,693. Large vendor claims I've listed for your review, but I've highlighted two vendor payments. Mickelson Construction Incorporated, $151,575. This is for streets and water for asphalt, sand, and road base. Morton and Company, $121,149. 2018 Workers Compensation Excess Policy Premium and Consulting Fee. This report explains 84.34% of all the vendor claims for the month of December. December purchase card activity, we had 1,205 transactions for the month, totaling $328,361. And we had 141 card holders who used their card. We had four purchase agents who had monthly totals greater than 10,000, and I've listed the types of expenditures for your review. This concludes my report. Any questions for Joyce Council? Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. I would entertain a motion, Council. Mr. Chair, Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Johnston and a second by Orr. Connie, could you please call the roll? Johnston? Yes. Moore? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Moore? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four, installation of newly elected council members. Ruth Whitworth, city clerk, will administer the oath of office to the newly elected city council members. And the mayor. And the mayor. And the mayor will get in there. Yeah. <laughs> you get your own time in the sun. Oh. <laughs> Is that good, Penny? Is that gonna work? Okay. All right, just gonna raise your hand, please. Um, I and then state your name. I, 
Heidi Addison, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the state of Idaho, and the state of Idaho, and the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello, and the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello, and that I will, to the best of my ability, and that I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully perform the duties, faithfully perform the duties, of the office of city council member, of the office of city council member, in the city of Pocatello, in the city of Pocatello, Bannock County, Idaho, Bannock County, Idaho, during my continuance therein, during my continuance therein. So help me God. So help me God. You will sign one of those and then I'll take one. Okay. Okay, Linda. I, Linda Lord, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the state of Idaho, and the state of Idaho, and the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello, and the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello, and that I will, to the best of my ability, and that I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully perform the duties, faithfully perform the duties of the office of council member of the Office of Council Member in the City of Pocatello in the City of Pocatello Bannock County, Idaho Bannock County, Idaho during my continuance therein during my continuance therein so help me God so help me God and if you would sign those please okay. I think you know the drill by now. <laughs> Go ahead. I read you. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of Idaho. And the state of Idaho. And the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello. And the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello. And that I will, to the best of my ability. And that I will, to the best of my ability. Faithfully perform the duties. Faithfully perform the duties. Of the office of city council member of the Office of City Council Member in the City of Pocatello in the City of Pocatello Bannock County, Idaho Bannock County, Idaho during my continuance therein during my continuance therein so help me God so help me God Congratulations Ready, Mayor? Okay. You've done this a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I, Brian Glad. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of Idaho. And the state of Idaho. And the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello. And the laws and ordinances of the city of Pocatello. And that I will, to the best of my ability, and that I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully perform the duties, faithfully perform the duties, of the office of mayor, of the office of mayor, in the city of Pocatello, in the city of Pocatello, Bannock County, Idaho, Bannock County, Idaho, during my continuance therein, during my continuance therein, so help me God, so help me God. Thank you. of president of the council. This time has been set aside for council to elect a president of the council in conformance with Idaho code section 50-702. Mr. Mayor. 
Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I nominate Jim Johnston. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Bray and a second by Councilman Cheatham. He beat you. I <laughs> have to say that. <laughs> Connie, could you please call the roll? Bray. Yes. Cheatham. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Larry. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Roger. I, th I think congratulations anyway. <laughs> we'll, find we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> Move on to agenda item number six, communication of proclamations. We have no proclamations tonight. And I don't see any Cub Scouts or Scouts out there, but I do see the cutest grandbaby that's ever, <laughs> ever been, I might just say. So we will move on to agenda item number seven is a calendar review. Council may wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. January 11 at 9 a.m. study session. January 18, 1 p.m. study session, clarification working lunch. January 18, 5.30 p.m. clarification meeting. January 18, 6 p.m. Regular, regular city council meeting. Other events, Christmas tree drop-off sites will be available through January 9. Boxes are located at City Hall parking lot, Rainy Park on South Arthur, and Sister City Park entrance on Pocatello Creek Road. Trees will be chipped and used as landscape projects. Be sure to remove all strings, wires, and other objects to avoid damaging the city's wood chipping equipment. Uh, winter programs are happening at the zoo. Contact zoo office for more information. The deadline to submit an application for council seat number two will be accepted until 5 p.m. on January 10, 2018. City offices will be closed January 15 for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. However, garbage and recycle pickups will be on schedule. Snow removal reminder, when clearing sidewalks and or driveways, do not place the snow in the streets. It becomes a driving hazard. We will move to agenda item eight, adoption of new job descriptions and titles for city employees. Council may wish to adopt the job descriptions and titles for city employees developed through the BDPA incorporated compensation study associated with the hybrid compensation scale adopt, adopted by council for fiscal year 2018. Here. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the uh, new job descriptions and titles for city employees in accordance with our compensation study. Second. I have a motion by Bray and a second by Council President Johnston. Connie, could you please call the roll? Bray. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Cheatham. Yes. Lund. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item nine. Council support requested Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation grant application for construction of multi-use pathway. The Port of Greenway and Trails Working Group are seeking City Council support regarding an Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation grant application for construction of a multi-use pathway along the eastern edge of Interstate 15 right-of-way to be used for a pathway extending north from Monta Vista overpass to Pocatello Creek Road. The support request is for the following. A, support the submission of an Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation grant application in the amount of $150,000 and if awarded, B, authorize the mayor's signature to on documents related to the grant subject to legal department review for construction of a pathway extending north from Monta Vista overpass to Pocatello Creek Road. Grant funds will be used to grade, gravel, and pave the pathway. Matching funds will come from the Port of Greenway Foundation and various in-kind donations from private organizations. The city of Pocatello will assume full ownership of the pathway upon completion. <coughs> Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the uh, uh, request for support for the grant for the uh, Greenway Trail that we authorize your signature on the document subject to legal department approval or review and that uh, once this is completed the city will assume full ownership of the pathway. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Adamson. Connie, could you please call the roll? Bray. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Cheatham. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Larry. Yes. 
Thank you. Ad agenda item 10, discussion items. This time has been set aside to hear discussion items not listed on the agenda. Items which appear somewhere else on the agenda will not be discussed at this time. The council is not allowed to take any official action at this meeting on matters brought forward under this agenda item. Items will either be referred to the appropriate staff or scheduled on a subsequent agenda. You must sign in uh, you must sign in at the start of the meeting in order to be recognized. And good news, we don't have anybody signed in, so we will move on to agenda item 11, which is the State of the City Report. The State of the City Report will be presented at this time. After an effort that spanned the globe, the city raised its new flag in September. The flag is a compilation of several designs that incorporates important symbolism that was highlighted by the public and experts during the almost two-year process. The economy of Pocatello continued its upward trend in 2017 with two substantial groundbreakings. The North Gate project east of I-15 and the Siphon Interchange will be a walkable community adding thousands of jobs as well as homes, a technology park, and a shopping district. Additionally, the Federal Bureau of Investigations facility is adding roughly 300 jobs, bringing the FBI office in the Gate City close to the same size as their Boston and Salt Lake City field office. Also in economic development, Great Western Malting wrapped up their multi-million dollar expansion in Pocatello and the new Fairfield Inn opened for business off the Center Street exit. The Pocatello Police Department received a grant from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for seatbelt enforcement. The grant funds overtime for officers assisting during the enforcement period as well as the purchase of a message board to raise awareness. In October, Idaho Central Credit Union donated a former Green Machine Jeep to the department which will be refurbished for the D.A.R.E. program. The Investigations Division received a commendation from the Gresham, Oregon Police Task Force for their help on a cold case. Officers' work was crucial in solving the case and making the arrest of the suspect who had relocated to Pocatello. The Pocatello Fire Department responded to more than 8,000 calls in fiscal year 2017, up nearly 7% from 16. During the year, firefighters participated in two learn and burn exercises. The events allow crews to get valuable live fire experience in a controlled but realistic setting while maintaining a high level of safety. The training was put to a test by two major fires in 2017. Shortly after the 4th of July, a wildfire was started by illegal fireworks near Bitterroot Drive. Due to the conditions, the fire rapidly threatened all the homes on Bitterroot Drive. Firefighters were able to contain the fire, but not before it destroyed one home and severely damaged another. In November, a fire started at the Safe Haven facility on Terry Street. Through the quick actions of the facility and firefighters, all 49 residents were evacuated to safety. The response to the incident was a cooperative of effort involving multiple departments. The Pocatello Regional Transit provided buses that sheltered and transported victims and provided a rehabilitation area for firefighters. Pocatello police officers secured the perimeter, provided a safe area for responders to operate. The Street Operations Department supported the event by refueling trucks and supplying barricades. The Water Department ensured that fire operations had adequate water to fight the blaze. This summer, the Sanitation Department doubled the number of containers available through the Partners in Pride program. The effort allowed residents to use a free dumpster to help with projects which may require greater than usual trash service. The Partners in Pride containers can be reserved on a first-come, first-served basis. The Science and Environmental Division, with help of students from Utah State University's Department of Landscape Architecture, Idaho State University faculty, and other local organizations, showed residents what the future could hold for the Portneuf River in the city. The group presented more than a dozen concepts for river restoration and rehabilitation at an open house in November. The comments at the open house have been incorporated into a final report that will be available at river.pocatello.us in early 2018. 2017 was a record-breaking year for the Street Operations Department with more than 40 miles of road treated during the annual pavement management program. The department implemented the Automated Traffic Signal Performance Measures software developed by Purdue University and Utah Department of Transportation. The software allows staff to react quickly to changing traffic conditions and modify signal times to help motorists travel around the city more efficiently. Street Operations also started the Clean Up Pocatello program. This public awareness campaign educates the public about proper grass clippings and yard waste disposal so less ends up on the city streets and in the storm drains. 
In addition to providing support for many city departments, the engineering department saw the Lewis Street Bridge replaced in 2017. The new 61-foot structure replaces the bridge that was built in 1948 and was funded through city and federal sources. Water department crews were able to replace two miles of water main lines in 2017. Crews also completed Phase 2 and 3 of the Johnny Creek Pressure Improvement Project. The phases included the installation of a 750-gallon surge tank as well as two pressure-regulating valve stations. This past fall, the Water Department was awarded Best of Show in the Water Taste Test Competition at the American Water Works Association's Regional Conference. By taking the Best of Show title, we are eligible to compete at the National Conference in June 2018. At the Water Pollution Control Facility, Phase 1 of the Total Phosphorus Removal Project was completed, with the new filtration facility being commissioned in April. The process uses bacteria and filters to remove the phosphorus from the incoming water. It was another record-setting year for Pocatello Regional Airport. Passenger departures and arrivals increased by more than 10% for the second consecutive year, bolstered by the addition of a third Sunday flight to Salt Lake City in October. As part of the Federal Aviation Administration Capital Improvement Program, two new taxiways were built, removing the old connection to the runway. Airport staff coordinated with the Transportation Security Administration to install an advanced imagery technology machine at the passenger screening checkpoint. The new AIT reduces screening time significantly, especially for anyone with metal implants. This year, Driscoll Tape LLC entered into a lease for the former Idaho Accelerator facility. The company has spent more than $1 million on improvements to the city-owned facilities to create a high-compression hay baling operation. Pocatello Regional Transit celebrated its 35th year as a city department this past year. In 2017, PRT purchased six new buses for the rural program, retiring six others that had over 300,000 miles apiece. Thanks to our dedicated maintenance team, PRT was able to double the federal useful life expectancy of the vehicles. Along with the rest of our fleet, and despite a few snow days, an eclipse, and a change to our services, PRT provided just over 290,000 passenger trips during the year. In 2017, Pocatello Animal Services partnered with PetSmart Charities to have two kennels with cats and kittens available for adoption at the business. PetSmart staff helped take care of the pets while animal service volunteers provide additional support. During the holidays, the department held its first annual Kongmas Toy Drive. Residents donated over 100 toys to homeless pets staying at the shelter. The toys are a vital part of enrichment for animals at the shelter and helps them cope with shelter life. Thanks to a $30,000 grant from the Friends of the Marshall Public Library, new shelving was installed at the library. These new shelves allowed for the relocation of some collections at the facility, as well as the expansion of the adult collections. In October, the library joined the EBSCO Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center. This database allows library patrons to access nearly 2,000 magazines and books, as well as over 700 videos related to their interests. The Information Technology Department continued its efforts to educate city staff on the best cybersecurity practices. We were successful in reducing the click rate on email phishing scams from 26% down to 5%. The department also contracted with the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center to perform a vulnerability assessment of the city's network and were able to identify and correct areas that were considered at risk. The city server room and uninterrupted power supply were upgraded, enabling the department to install new switches that support the ever-increasing demands on our networks. The Planning and Development Services Department had a very busy 2017, processing a large number of land use applications for a variety of development. Also, through the city's Community Development Block Grant funding, new sidewalk, curb, and gutter were built along Frederick Hill Road. With this same funding source, the city purchased property on which NeighborWorks Pocatello is building new infill homes. Sites on Jason Avenue and Wilson Avenue will result in four new, affordable infill homes. In the Parks and Recreation Department, 2017 saw professional level disc golf come to the East Fork Mink Creek Nordic Center. Named the Sunrise Lions Disc Golf Complex and built through a partnership with the Sunrise Lions Club and Portneuf Health Trust, the 36-hole complex uses the existing trails as fairways and is free to the public. At Caldwell Park, a reflection garden was installed at no cost to the city through a public-private partnership with Mrs. Janet Schubert and 
and the College Neighborhood Association. The garden includes a bubbler water feature, ADA accessible walkways, benches, trees, ambient lighting, and a plaque honoring Dr. William Schubert. Through a $10,000 IF grant, the College Neighborhood Association and NeighborWorks Pocatello turned Caldwell Park into a winter wonderland. The lights were installed in mid-November and in use throughout the holiday season. Zoo Idaho saw the first phase of the entrance landscaping project completed with the help of the parks and street operations departments. At the Community Recreation Center, a new state-of-the-art sport court floor was put down in the multi-purpose gym. The new floor was purchased through a grant from Basic American Foods Giving Program and donations from local residents and features permanent basketball court markings as well as a pickleball court overlay. New glass backboards and breakaway hoop systems were also installed. Looks like that's it. <laughs> I might just add before we close the meeting that it has been a very busy year. We've got great employees that have just done an incredible job uh, for, for the city. They take a lot of pride in what they do and, and I know the people you see sitting up here and the couple that you saw leave earlier um, really appreciate the work that the city employees do. We, we've we've got the best employees, I believe, in the country, and so yeah, we can give them an applause. Thank you. That's what they do. If you notice that, if you noticed that we shot that video a little bit, uh, uh, what a month ago, I guess, or maybe even a couple weeks ago, because at the airport has said they've had the third flight. Well, we just announced the fourth flight. And so that's another great boom for our uh, uh, our community and our, the economic development that we have. I will tell you, uh, we Pocatello is an incredible place. We're going to see many, many things happen, and I think it's exciting. We've we've had an announcement on the north end here, and I think that what's really exciting is you're going to see more things, I believe, happening in, in the Old Town. You're going to see at least see me focusing more in Old Town and, and revitalizing Old Town where, where we've got a lot of really neat things happening. And then on the south end of town, we've got a lot of places that really need some, some help. And so I'm pretty excited about this next year as, as we move forward. And so hopefully the plans and hopefully everything that we're working on comes uh, comes forward and, and is successful. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you to the council for all the work that, that you do. Uh, I really believe that the council has put the city in a great spot uh, financially. We've, we've worked hard on a budget that is a, a sustainable budget and it's working and it's doing the things that we that, that I believe we need to have happen and I think the council is all in favor as well as what's happening here. So thank you very much. Thank you for being here and with that we are adjourned.